This video chart presentation is Sierra Gold Inc. brought to you by AllPennyStocks.com. Sierra Gold trades on Toronto Venture Exchange under the ticker SGP. You can see it's had a very solid uptrend going since it broke out here in early 2011. Like so many other resource plays, it slid back. But even though the markets have been getting beaten up a little bit, SGP is still trying to put together a new uptrend. Nice bounce off the 200-day moving average. See, we've got a bullish cross in the MACD histogram. Nice trend back towards zero that's begun. Looks like it's really trying to pull out of that downtrend, that big pullback that it had. Of course, we keep our eye on the breakout towards zero, but more importantly, in a little bit longer term, we'll look for this just to continue to uptrend. Not any pullbacks, look for the MACD to make higher lows. Similar look with the PPO trending back towards zero. Also pretty loose, but a pinch sort of formation. Always very conducive for reversals. Positive DI starting to trend back upward. Negative DI trending down. We'll look for some bullish crosses through there. MFIs all in a strong uptrend, all holding over top of 50 at this point. Again, very nice look. And I always like to see this accumulation distribution trending upward. See if we can pull it back to the full nine months, still making higher lows. Plenty of buying going on in this play. Even on the pullback, still managed to maintain an uptrend, or worst case scenario, which you'd call maybe a tight channel. But we didn't see some big sell-off in there, so that's a good sign for this chart to try and recover. Very nice look to the Jake and Money Flow. All nine months holding in the green. Buying pressure has been overcoming selling pressure. CCI just now breaking through 100. Of course, that's the buy signal by definition. Very strong uptrend. Same way with the full still. Higher lows. Nice upward channel. Holding over top of 50 now. Bullish cross. Very nice look to the full still. And the tricks, which of course is lagging, but a good long-term indicator of movement. There's the bullish cross, and much like the MACD, you're starting to see the trend back upward now at this point. Solid upward climb in the RSIs as well. It's important to note that the 14 and 21 are now trying to break through 50. That's a very strong bullish indication. So we're looking for a continuation of those two components to have them trend over top of 50. You can see even when they're sliding backwards through here, a little bit of a downtrend to it, but basically holding the channel, holding over top of 50, and then a larger move follows. So it's important to get those two components, especially of the RSI from a little bit longer term aspect to be trending over top of 50. It's much more bullish. Of course, as I mentioned, nice uptrend beginning. Great support found off the 200-day moving average. There's multiple levels of support through here. Take it right down to this 35, 36 area as a bottom because it ties in with the 200-day moving average, and it also ties in with support back through here early on in the year. So on any larger pullbacks, I'd look for that to hold. Close is closed at 45 cents, so I always look to see if there's something a little bit closer, and there is some right there in the area of 41 cents. See, it was set up as a resistance point. It was a resistance point right back in through here. So I'd look for 41 cents to be a close source of support. And I'd want to see that hold. That also ties in with the uptrend with making new higher lows, and continuing a pretty linear progression upward. From a resistance standpoint, I'd look right there to the 48, 49 cent area. See, it was a tough spot through here. It was a definitive breakout point. Break out of that spot, and the stock surged to 75 cents. 50 day moving average is going to be coming down into play. Of course, it's dynamic, it's heading downward. It's not going to be able to twist that quickly. So here in the coming days, certainly going to reinforce that resistance level. So look for the 48, 49 cent mark to be pretty difficult on it and a key breakout point once again. From there, resistance really doesn't come into play again until up around the 62 cent mark. I'd call that a secondary resistance, but it's definitely going to be an area of resistance for it. From that point, of course, you're looking for a new high. Now, as I mentioned, we're at 45 cents. It's not something you look for tomorrow. Just defining where definitive areas are going to be. So let's look for that 48, 49, 50 cent mark to be a pretty tough area of resistance for it. It'll hit a little bit more around 62, and of course the top up there around 75. The indicators certainly appear to be trying to turn to get some long-term bullishness to this. And I'd look for these support levels around 41, and very bottom down here around 35 to hold on any kind of pullbacks. We'll look for volume to stay strong. 325,000 shares traded is not that bad. Probably right around average for it, maybe slightly below. You can see us can put together some pretty good volume days. Over a million shares can trade. So we'll look for some stronger days to come in if it's going to try and push its way through this resistance through that 50-day moving average. All in all, though, a pretty nice looking chart in both the short and long term. I'll be keeping an eye on this to see where it goes. As always, video chart is merely my interpretation. I'm not a financial consultant. I strongly encourage you to do your own property due diligence because I'll qualify financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Please visit the AllPennyStocks.com website to view the full disclaimer disclosure. Do not base any investment decisions upon any material found on the website and or video chart. No person employed by AllPennyStocks is a registered investment advisor or licensed broker dealer. Thank you for watching and trade smart.